Hey guys, it's John. Welcome back to another video. So I've had a lot of comments on my previous Amazon Fire Tablet video that I'm going to cover in this video. This video will cover all the questions you guys have been asking me, so I won't need to respond to everyone individually anymore. Okay, so I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm gonna go through the most popular questions you guys keep asking me, and then after that, I'm just gonna go through the entire toolbox and explain what each setting do, and hopefully that will answer all your questions. So one of the most popular questions I keep getting asked is how to install Prime, because after we've removed Amazon, everything Amazon, it takes out Prime as well, and people want to know how to get it back onto the tablet. So to do that, you want to make sure your tablet is plugged back in, and in the Fire Toolbox, I've got version 10 here, we want to go to Manage Everything Amazon. And then once we're in here, we want to go to where it says Restore Everything Amazon and click on Manual. In here, we'll be able to select which apps we'd like to install back onto the tablet. So what most people have been asking for is Amazon Prime Video. They want that on there. So we can tick this. And if we want any other Amazon apps, it's probably good to install the Amazon App Store. Uh, a lot of people are mentioning the camera too. You can install this or you can download another one from the Google Play Store. I'm gonna leave this one out because I've downloaded a separate one from the Play Store. But then all you need to do is press Enable Selected. After we've re-enabled these apps, what you wanna do is hold down the power button on the top right of the Amazon tablet and restart the device. Right, now that the tablet has restarted, if we swipe up, we can see Amazon App Store is installed and Prime Video 2. There we go. Now you'll be able to watch Prime again. That's uh, That was one of the big questions that people get asking, how can Prime's gone? So this will enable it back for you and hopefully you guys will be able to watch videos again. And as for the camera, you could install the Amazon Fire camera back on, but instead what I prefer to do is I prefer to have a different camera that has more tools on it from the Play Store. So if we go into the Play Store now and search for camera, we'll be able to see a bunch of different cameras here. Um, you can choose whatever you'd like. I think open camera is free and it's easy and it gives you a lot of tools. So I'm going to download that one. There we go, it's added to my home screen. Launch the app. Just allow the permissions. And there we go. I have a, a camera now on my tablet again. Right, so those are the two biggest questions that people are asking, how to install Prime Video back on and how to get the camera back on. Now that you know how to do that, you can install any app you'd like that we've taken off. I'm going to cover what each of the items do in the toolbox. So hopefully now that will cover any future questions you have. So to start, the first thing on here is ADB Shell. This will allow you to send some commands to the tablet. You don't really need to worry about that unless you really know what you're doing. So I'd leave that alone. Okay, so next is Google services. You can read this here. This will probably explain better than how I'll explain what it does. So just pause here if you wanna read that. Um, once you've installed it, you'll be able to manage your account here where you can add another account, manage them, clear your data or cache, and then uninstall the services. So if you want to remove the Google Play Store and the framework and the other services, you can just uninstall that here. That's all this option does. Um, I'd recommend keeping Google Play installed with the Play services because they help to keep your apps updated and it keeps the compatibility. Next is the custom launcher. So if you want to install another launcher, you've changed your mind, you got a bit bored of what you currently have, you have the ability now to change it to some other launchers that weren't in there before. So launcher is a new one that's been added. That's the one I'm currently running. I think it's a lot nicer than the others. It looks similar to the Pixel devices, a nice clean launcher, simple. And I'll show you for example what it looks like if you want to change the launch you currently have. So select the new one you'd like, install that. You can see I've already installed it. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then once you want to set this on your device, I'll need to open up the Nova Launcher. And if I go into the Nova Launcher settings, 
it shows me at the top it's not set at default. All I need to do is tap that, select Nova Launcher at the bottom. Once you've done that, it will load. Uh, it might take some time, just leave it a second. I think it took like 15 seconds for me. Then it'll pop up again at the bottom. Just press always. And now every time you go back, it will always take you to the Nova Launcher. If you have two launchers installed, you might have trouble setting one as your main. So just delete the other one like this. Once you've uninstalled the other launcher, uh, it, will, it will be competing with another one. So this will then be the default again. Next here we have hybrid apps. This will just allow you to install Netflix and Disney. I'm not too bothered about that, so I'm gonna leave it. Custom sounds is the next one. This will allow you to change the sounds your device makes when you turn it on, uh, when you get a notification, all that sort of stuff. I'm not gonna to bother touching that. I, I'm happy with what I got now, but that's what that setting does. Keyboard and input. With this option here, you'll be able to get a custom keyboard. If you press execute, you'll be able to have a drop down menu here where you can choose which keyboard you'd like. I currently have a Swift key installed. You can change it to any soft if you want. Density modifier, this will allow you to change the density of your tablet. I wouldn't touch that, I'd leave it. Don't mess with that settings. Changing the lock screen wallpaper, this will allow you to change the lock screen wallpaper. It uses the Prime Photos app to get its way around it for you. So you can just browse and select a photo from here. Although I'm not sure if you need to do this if you have a custom launcher installed because you can just hold your finger down on the launcher, select wallpaper. Um, I'm gonna select photos here and you'll be able to change what kind of photo you want on your background and set it from there. I haven't had any problems with this. It's always worked fine for me, but there's another option maybe if you didn't have a custom launcher installed. Next is the Google Assistant. This pop-up here will explain what it does better than I will. It'll just replace Alexa so you can get rid of Alexa and have the Google Assistant installed instead. Manage everything Amazon. So this option here allows you to disable or restore everything that's Amazon on the tablet. If you click on the manual mode here, example restore, I can choose which apps I'd like to restore onto the tablet. And if you just want to get rid of some apps but not the others, instead of automatically removing everything, you can just manually select which ones you want. On the next page, we have modify system settings, which allows you to remove the navigation bar. This is what is on the bottom of the tablet, the navigation gestures. I wouldn't remove that, otherwise you wouldn't be able to move around your operating system. Next, you wanna make sure automatic updates are disabled and OT updates are disabled. Otherwise your tablet will automatically update itself and revert back to how it was. Then install from unknown sources allows you to install things downloaded from the web. And search bar on the lock screen, I have no idea what that is. I don't have a search bar on the lock screen. Removing lock screen ads. If you bought the version of the Fire Tablet that has ads on it, you can go to this option and it will remove the ads for you. If you want to read a bit more about it, just pause and read this bit here. Power options. This one will just allow you to power off the device, reboot, put into recovery mode, or get you into the bootloader. Screen capture for if you want to capture your screen by taking a screenshot or recording. Parental control hide. This will just hide the parental control options. Again, this screen here will tell you about it. If you read this, just pause and read that. Sideload apps. So if you went to sideload an app, you can download an app on your computer and then push it to the device. You don't need to do this if you have the Play Store because you'll probably have all the apps you'll want from there. But if there's any apps from other websites that you want, you can download them to your computer, browse for them and then sideload them. Or if you want to search for an app, this would be if you didn't have the Play Store installed on your device. You can search for it here where it will bring up the option in the web browser and you can download it from there and sideload it. But again, you can just use the Play Store so I don't see why you need that. Privacy controls. I always have this stuff off. I don't like sending my data to Amazon. Um, so I keep these options off. I recommend you do the same. System backup. 
If you want to back up your device, you can. It will probably be a safe bet. If you're tinkering around, messing around with the settings, you probably want to make sure you have a backup so you don't damage or corrupt anything. Push and pull. This will open up a little file browser which will allow you to take things from your device or put things onto your device. So for example, if I go here, you can see I can browse through the files of my device and I can take things from it. User management. While this feature does indeed function, it isn't perfect. Please keep in mind that all users created by the toolbox will be deleted on reboot and adding a user can sometimes cause soft bricks that can be fixed through a factory reset. With these options, you can add a new user, remove a user or switch users. As this is under development, I won't bother touching this because it might corrupt your files. And as it said in the beginning, it might soft break your device, which means you'll need to factory reset it. So just leave these settings alone. On the last page, we have YouTube clients. This will allow you to install a bunch of different YouTube clients, which will allow you to, um, I think, block ads on YouTube and allow you to play videos in the background. Yeah, I don't use these because I want to support my YouTube community. Please don't use these while watching my YouTube videos because I'll lose my ad revenue. And I guess the last settings here now are the options in the gear, the top right. This will just change how the interface works. You can turn on and off the splash screens. You can check for an update. I currently have the latest version. Change the theme. There's only one theme right now. Routing a device isn't currently available. If I click it, there you go, you can see. And then about just tells you about the program, which is made by Datastream. So thank you, Datastream. And I think that covers everything that you guys wanted to know. I don't have anything else to say, I don't think. Um, if you have any more questions, do let me know in the comments and I will answer them for you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.